Hello and welcome to the JK Feather Ranch channel. Now when you have an electric car, uh, whenever you're not driving it, it's pretty much just a massive battery sitting around, storing energy, and doing nothing. Wouldn't it be nice if you could use that energy for things like powering a campsite, or maybe your house on those hot days in the middle of summer when the power company decides they'd rather massively inconvenience you then fix their infrastructure and avoid setting things on fire. Wouldn't that be nice? Now, some manufacturers give you that ability from the factory with built-in power outlets, but not Chevy, at least not on the bolt. So we're gonna do a little upgrade and install our own inverter. Let's get started. The inverter I'm using is a 2000 watt pure sine wave model, which just happens to match my hair. I first marked out the basic dimensions on a sheet of metal Added some flaps for sides. More flaps to fold over to prevent sharp edges. And some more flaps to hold everything together. After cutting everything out, I finally had a reason to use the new sheet metal brake I bought, starting with the edges. Confucius says, if the only tool you have is a hammer, then the hammer becomes the right tool. I then bent one long side, including the connecting flaps, and rolled over the edges on the two short sides while I still had access. before bending up the other long side. I then bent the short sides using a scrap piece of metal clamped inside the box as a guide, and spot welded the corners together. I could have used rivets or screws, but then I wouldn't have had an excuse to buy yet another toy. Under the hood, the inverter is going to sit right here, ironically on top of the main drive inverter for the car itself. I need to make a bracket to support it that mounts to these two bolts here, this stud here, and this bolt way back here. I'll start by removing this bolt, and in its place installing a 6mm stud, a couple of washers as spacers, and a nut to hold everything down, and then repeating the process in the back. After cutting the studs to length off camera, I marked where I needed to drill the holes for my bracket to fit. And then drilled them slightly oversized so I'd have a bit of wiggle room. The test fit was perfect, feline approved, and I tightened things down so I could line up my next piece. I then did the same thing with the bolt back here, except it's 8mm along with the one in front. Because I could only get metric threaded rod in short length, I had to use a coupling nut to put the two pieces together. I then measured and marked my hole, 
drilled it, and welded the two pieces together. It took a tiny bit of finesse, but everything fits together so far. Since there's already a stud sticking up in front, I only had to install a coupling nut and some threaded rod. Line things up. Mark and weld. The only thing to do is attach one more piece to make everything square. Clean up the edges. Test fit one more time. and apply paint. I then drilled oversized mounting holes in the box to allow some wiggle room, made sure everything would tighten down, and the hood would close. Maybe I should have done that sooner. I bent up a lid, did not check my camera angle before recording. And there we go. I then cut out some holes for ventilation. Remember what I said about camera angles? And attached a couple of grills. I then test fit the inverter, marked my mounting holes, and installed screws to be used as studs. I could then mark and drill holes for the battery cables. Installed a cord connector, and drilled one more hole for the control cable. I made sure a bushing would fit, but did not install it yet. After removing the 12 volt battery, I could access this grommet here, which comes out under the dash inside the car. I started by drilling a hole through the grommet, poked a wire through to the outside, got a bit too aggressive with my pulling, and finally, with the help of some soapy water for lube, yoinked the power cord through. And yes, yoink is a technical term. Before I spend the hour or so it'll end up taking me to put the grommet back in, I may as well mount the control box, which is going right here. A sharp razor blade works just fine to cut the soft plastic, And after screwing the control box in place, I could reinstall the fuse cover and fish the cable through. I then zip tied both wires here and finally bolted down my bracket. Because I didn't fully think things through previously, I cut off the end of my extension cord, clamped down the connector, and installed the control cable. Remember what Confucius said about hammers? Using wide fender washers above and below, I secured the box. And made sure the hood still closed. 
After reinstalling the 12 volt battery and driving to Home Depot, I replaced the plug. This probably made a stronger connection than factory, so oh well. With yet another bad camera angle, a hooked fishing wire, and a little finesse, I was able to route the cord to the back of the car under the interior trim. I then took apart the rear cargo area and removed the back seat. I drilled a hole into the rear cargo panel and pulled the cord through. I'll be using this heavy duty marine outlet, so the first step is to drill a mounting hole. The bit grabbed a bunch of this insulation material, so I'll just remove it. I then slid the cord through the protective boot, cut it to length, wired up the outlet, sealed things with some heat shrink, and installed it into the panel. I then connected the control cable, plugged in the extension cord, mounted the inverter on the studs, and zip-tied the extra control wire out of the way. I used one zero-gauge battery cables to hook up the inverter. After deciding how I wanted to route them, I cut and stripped the wire, used a hydraulic crimper to install a terminal, and then sealed the connection with heat shrink. I used some braided nylon wire loom to protect from abrasion, cut off the excess and secured with a zip tie, and connected everything to the battery. To make the positive cable fit, I had to use a lock washer under the terminal as a spacer and slightly modify the red plastic cover. Because of how the bolt works, it has to be in neutral in order to use the inverter for more than an hour without the car shutting off and draining the 12 volt battery. Unfortunately, this plays the pedestrian alert spaceship noise constantly, which is a problem when camping. To solve this, I removed fuse 10 under the hood, replaced it with this ECU repair fuse holder, installed my own 7.5 amp fuse, and wired it to a switch in the cover of the fuse box. Success! After a test run, I found that the fan in the inverter itself was not powerful enough to ventilate the box and just blew hot air around inside of it, so I installed a computer case fan in one of the openings.
Since it's plugged into a USB port on the inverter, it automatically turns on when it's on and off when it's turned off. And now that we have the inverter installed, uh, it's time to test it, doing one of the things that we plan to do while we're camping, which is making cookies in our toaster oven. We previously had one of those little metal box ovens that sits on top of a stove, but that didn't have a temperature that we could easily control, and it had no insulation whatsoever. So since we were doing an inverter anyways, we decided to go ahead and get this toaster oven. Let's see how it works. And just to show you that there's no funny business going on, we've got our cord plugged into the back of the car. We're just gonna follow it around. Shut the tailgate. Plugged into our toaster oven here. I'm going to turn the car on and at the start of this test we have 235 miles on the dash. Turn the inverter on. Set our oven to bake. Let's uh, preheat it for a little bit at 300 degrees. Change of plans, we're just going to put the cookies in and let them cook while it preheats, just like we do with our oven in the house. And it does already feel fairly warm, so now we just let them cook. And there you have it, a poor man's Rivian camp kitchen. And coming back over here to the car, that used an entire two miles of range. So that's how to install an inverter in your EV and make it look like it mostly belongs there. I do think that all manufacturers should offer it from the factory, at least as an option. Uh, but if they don't, it is something you can add yourself. Now, if you found this video helpful, if you're planning on doing it yourself, or if you just like watching these videos, uh, please leave a comment below, like the video, and feel free to subscribe to our channel. If you want to watch us tow our trailer to the Grand Canyon and put what we just did to use. Thanks for watching. Here, and oh, oh hi. What, what are you doing here? We're going to come back in the car and in... What?